All right, guys, so we are back with a brand new video, and I'm going to get started on React.js. So for those who aren't familiar with React, React is basically a front-end JavaScript library that allows you to build powerful, dynamic websites that have rich user interfaces. It makes it very easy to build single-page applications. So in the last video playlist where we went over Express.js, that was all for the backend. So our goal is to go over React.js, which is all front-end, and then later on, we're going to connect both the front-end and the backend together. Now you're probably wondering, well, why exactly should I learn React? Well, let's say, for example, if you're building a website that has a lot of dynamic data, so data that can change over time, and let's just say you have a web page that wants to display 10 users. Those users could probably differ every single time. So if someone new signs up to your website, your web page is probably going to display a different user in that list of 10 users. So you definitely can't hard code that because if you were to hard code it into your HTML document, you would have to modify every single time. Instead, the way it works is you make an HTTP call to the backend and it's going to return an array of user objects. And the front end framework allows you to dynamically render all of the user objects. So that way you can display all the data without needing to hard code anything. And we'll look at a couple of examples later on in this course of dynamic rendering as well as conditional rendering. So these are important concepts to understand. Okay, so to get started with setting up a React project, you need to make sure you have Node.js installed. If you don't have Node.js installed, you just go to nodejs.org and download it from there for whichever operating system you're on. Once you have installed Node.js, you're going to want to install a package called npx. So npx allows us to execute node binaries. They so just run npm i hyphen g npx. Now, once you have npx installed, we're going to use a package called create react app, which is going to allow us to generate a react project from our terminal. So we're, you're going to type npx create react app. So it's not npm, but npx. Okay. And then you're going to type the name of the project. So I'm just going to call this react JS beginner. And now this is going to generate a brand new react project for us in the directory react JS beginner. So this is going to take some time. So I'll get back to you guys when it's done. All right, so we finally have our React app generated. So let's actually go ahead and cd into React.js beginner. So this is going to navigate us to the React.js beginner directory. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up a text editor. So now I didn't mention this. So you obviously want to make sure you have a text editor installed. So I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. So you can download it from code.visualstudio.com. And you can download it for whichever operating system you're using, either Mac OS, Windows, or Linux. And it's very easy to use and it's free. So I would highly suggest you guys start using it. You can also use other text editors too, but I just prefer Visual Studio Code. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and type code dot. So this is going to open up Visual Studio Code in the current directory, so React.js Beginner. So you can see that we have a bunch of files and let's quickly go through some of these files real quick so we can get a better understanding of the structure. So node modules folder, this is where all of our NPM packages are going to be installed. You don't really have to worry about this folder so you can safely ignore it. You probably won't ever need to do anything with this folder. So so don't worry about it. Let's look at the public folder. So this is going to contain our index.html. So this is actually the main HTML file. Okay. And it has this div with an ID called root. And we're actually going to get back to this in just a second. Okay. But this is going to be the main index.html file. And it has a bunch of other static assets such as the logo, a manifest.json file and a robots.txt file. All right. So we have our get ignore patch.json a readme yarn.log file. You don't have to worry about these things. The only files you're gonna have to worry about are the files inside the source folder. So let's start from app.css. So this is just a simple CSS file that has some CSS styling for our React app. Actually, let me actually run the application. So you can actually just type npm start. And this is going to start up your application. There are actually a couple of scripts that you can run, but npm start will start up the development server and it's going to take you to localhost port 3000. All right, so this is our React application. This is what was generated. So if we go over to app.css and then app.js, and this is our main app component that was generated. 
So we're not going to talk about this just yet, but just know that this is our main component. And then we have app.test.js, which we're not really going to spend much time on because this is out of the scope of the tutorial, but this is just for testing purposes. So you don't have to worry about this. And then we have index.css. So this is also just a CSS file. And then we have index.js. So index.js is the entry point of our application. So this is where we are importing the React module. This is where we're importing React DOM. And then we're importing our main app component which is this component right over here. Okay, and we're also importing two other files, the index.css as well as the service worker. And then from line seven to line 12, what we're doing, the important part here, is that we're calling react-dom.render. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna take this app component and it's going to mount all of this stuff onto this HTML element right over here. So you see how it says document.getElementById root. So this is going to get the element from index.html that has an ID of root. And it's going to basically take all of this and then mount it onto here. So essentially it's basically taking this whole div and then putting it on here. That's what's going on. So let me actually show you in the dev console. So if you click on elements and if you click on body div ID root, you can see right over here that if I zoom in that we have this div, the same one that we saw in index.html. And then we now have this div class and we have all of our HTML elements that was from app.js right over here. And in line 17, this is just for service worker. So again, we're not going to worry about those things. You can see we have logo.svg, service worker, and then setup test. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Nothing too crazy. So you can actually just delete uh, setup test.js, service worker.js, as well as app.test.js if you want. So we're just going to delete that. And then inside index.js, you want to make sure you delete this import because we don't have this file anymore. And as well as deleting the service worker.unregister. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And so the nice thing about our development server is that whenever we save, changes will be automatically applied. So we don't have to refresh the page. So for example, let's go inside app.js, which is our main component. If I go ahead and let me just delete all of this stuff right over here. So I'm going to save and you're going to see that our React application has changed. And let me move back. You're going to see that it's there. So again, this was just the installation process as well as understanding the basic structure of our application. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and get started with creating components and then have a brief introduction to JSX. So I'll see you guys in that video. Peace.